Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So in this video we're seeing another example of an algebraic locus type problem. Okay, so this example says, if z equals cos theta plus i sine theta, show that 1 minus z over 1 plus z is purely imaginary. Part 2, sketch the locus of z if the modulus of z is less than or equal to 1 and the modulus of 1 minus z over 1 plus z is less than or equal to root 3. Okay, so let's have a look at part 1 first. So part 1 is just a bit of algebra. So we have 1 minus z over 1 plus z. And what's this equal to? So this is 1 minus. Now it's going to be minus this entire part here, so it's going to be 1 minus cos theta and minus i sine theta, all over 1 plus cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay, now this is not very easy to simplify straight away, but we can manipulate it a little bit and make it easier for us to simplify. Now when we see these types of 1 minus cos theta here, and this 1 plus cos theta, we want to try and find a way to eliminate this 1. Because if we can eliminate this 1 and get it in mod arg form, so cos theta plus i sine theta, then we can manipulate it by using division through mod arg form. That's one of the uh, useful properties of division through mod arg form. Okay, so how can we eliminate this one here? Well, if we remember back to our double angle formulas, we had that cos 2x could be written in three different ways. Now, here we want it to have a positive one so that we can have 1 minus 1 here, which will cancel, and here we want, to, want it to have a negative one. So we're going to have a look at two different cases. First one will be 2 cos squared x minus 1. And the second will be 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Okay, and we also want to look at the double angle result for sine, which is 2 sine x cos x. Okay, so we're going to apply these two here to help us uh, simplify this expression. Okay, so we're going to have 1 minus. Now, cos theta... We can think of theta as 2 times theta over 2. So now we can apply our double angle formulas. And we're going to use the one that has a positive 1, which is this one here. So this will be 1 minus 2 sine squared theta over 2. Minus 2. Actually, yeah, we should close that bracket. Minus 2 i sine theta on 2 cos theta on 2. Okay, and now we're going to do a similar thing here, but we're going to use this for our cos double angle formula. So we're going to have 1 plus 1 plus 2 cos squared theta on 2 minus 1 plus 2i sine theta on 2 cos theta on 2. Okay, now we can simplify this a little bit. Let's move this up. Alright, now let's simplify. Here we're going to get 1 minus 1 is 0. We're going to get minus minus. So that's a plus 2 sine squared theta on 2. Minus 2i sine theta on 2 cos theta on 2. Over. These ones will cancel. And we're left with 2 cos squared theta on 2 plus 2i sine theta on 2 cos theta on 2. Okay, now we can factor out a 2 sine theta on 2 in the numerator and we can factor out a 2 cos theta on 2 in the denominator. And this is what we get. 2 sine theta on 2. Now we're left with just sine theta on 2. And here we're left with minus i cos theta on 2. Okay, 
here we can factor out a 2 cos theta on 2 and we're left with cos theta on 2 plus i sine theta on 2. Okay, now we can cancel these 2's, let's do that, and we can write sine theta on 2 over cos theta on 2, well that's tan theta on 2, and now we can consider these two expressions here. Now, in the denominator, we're fine. We have we have a cos plus i sine form, so that's all good. But in the numerator, we're sort of back to front. We have sine. Now, whether this is minus or plus, that's not the point. That's fine. We can work with that. But we have a sine minus i cos. So the way that we change this, so we have in cos plus i sine, we use the fact that i to the power 4 is equal to 1, and that i cubed is equal to minus i. So here we have, well, sine theta on 2 can be thought of as 1 times sine theta on 2, but we just said that i to the power 4 was equal to 1. So we can think of this as i to the power 4 sine theta on 2. And here we have a minus i, but again, we just said that minus i was i cubed. So this is going to be plus i cubed cos theta on 2. Divided by the numerator, which is fine. So we'll leave the numerator. Okay. Now, we want to get cos in the real part, so we're going to factor out i cubed so that cos is not related to i anymore. <clears throat> so when we factor out i cubed, we can write the i cubed out here. So i cubed tan theta on 2. Now, when we factor out the i cubed, we'll be left with a cos theta on 2. When we take i cubed out of this part, we're going to be left with a i sine theta on 2. Okay, so now we have it in our cos plus i sine form, and of course we're leaving the denominator. Okay, so now we can cancel these two terms. Since they're the same, we cancel them, and we're left with i cubed, which is, we can change it back to minus i now, so minus i tan theta on 2. Right, and this is purely real, so, which is purely, not real, purely imaginary. Okay, and we've shown what we need to show, so we can write QED. Okay, so, we've done the first part, we've shown that this is purely real. Now, sketch the locus of Z if the modulus of Z is less than or equal to 1, and... The modulus of 1 minus z over 1 plus z is less than or equal to root 3. Now, what we're told, we're told that the modulus of z is less than or equal to 1. Now, we already know what this looks like. This is the unit circle and all the points inside the unit circle. So, I've already drawn that bit in. Now, I'm not going to shade this because we want the intersection of these two locuses to give us our final locus. So I'm not going to shade this region in yet, but this is a star. We know that we're going to definitely be within the unit circle. Okay, now we need to work out what this is. This is not so obvious to us. Okay, now in the previous part, well, first of all, this is what we're looking for. Less than or equal to the square root of 3. Okay, this is what we're looking for. But in the previous part, we just showed that what's inside this modulus here was negative i tan theta on 2. So I can put negative i tan theta on 2 inside these modulus here. And this is what I get. Now, this we can write as the modulus of negative i times the modulus of tan theta on 2. Less than or equal to root 3. Okay, and of course, 
modulus of negative i, that's going to be 1. So here we're, here we're left with the modulus of tan theta on 2. But the modulus, this, this here is real, so the modulus is now thought of as the absolute value. So when we have the absolute value of something is less than or equal to something, we can also write it like this. Okay, so this is just a fancy way of writing this double-sided inequality. Okay, now let's take the tan inverse of all parts of this inequality. So if we take the tan inverse of negative root 3, that's going to be negative 60 degrees, or negative pi on 3 radians. Now, tan and tan inverse are going to cancel each other out, and we'll get theta on 2. And here, this is going to be positive pi on 3 radians. Okay, now let's multiply 3 by 2 so that we can get some inequality, some bound for theta. So we have negative 2 pi on 3. It's less than or equal to theta. It's less than or equal to 2 pi on 3. Okay, so why, why have I done this? Well... Recall that in the question we were told z equals cos theta plus i sine theta. So what's theta? Theta is the argument of z. Okay? So now we can put in here, for theta, we can put arg z. And we get negative 2 pi on 3. Is less than arg z, which is less than 2 pi on 3. And so now we have a recognizable type of locus. These are rays, these boundary cases here. So when arg z is equal to 2 pi on 3 and equal to negative 2 pi on 3, that's the ray with an angle 2 pi on 3 and negative 2 pi on 3 with the positive real axis. So now we can draw that in to our diagram and see what we get. Alright, so we already have the boundary case of the unit circle. Now negative 2 pi on 3 is going to be somewhere in the second quadrant and I've already marked it off so this here will be negative 2 pi on 3 and of course we're looking at arg z so we can't include the origin here because arg of 0 is undefined. So we have this ray, so this corresponds to 2 pi on 3, and we have the other ray, which is exactly reflected through the x-axis, or the real axis, and this corresponds here to negative 2 pi on 3. Okay, so we have the region between these two points and inside the unit circle. So what's the region between these two points? Well, the argument needs to be greater than negative 2 pi on 3. So that would be here. And it needs to be also less than 2 pi on 3, which would be here. That's included. Okay, so it's not coming out very well, but this shaded region in here, this is our final region that we've needed to show or work out. Okay, so this was a nice algebraic locus problem. And we'll be seeing a few more types of examples in future videos, so stay tuned. Okay, thanks for watching.